questions, Coach? A great win for us over Illinois. As I said after the game, really, really proud of our players, the way they played. All phases of the football team played very well. The defense did a great job helping the field goals in the first half, which allowed the offense to get going. A huge kickoff return certainly sparked you know, our football team, and that was a big, big play by all 11 guys on the field. Obviously, Leak got it all the credit. He had a tremendous day and uh, certainly deserves the accolades that he's received. But it was a, a team win, a great win, uh, one that we needed and uh, our kids deserved and really, really happy about that. Have a great team to play. Michigan State coming in here on Saturday. Football team that obviously is not giving up very many points on defense continues to find a way to win. Um, obviously, a great respect for for their staff, Coach Antonio, on what they do there and what they've done for a long, long time. So tremendous challenge for us. Excited to watch our guys play and uh, you know go out and practice this afternoon. Any questions you have, I'd love to answer. Turf Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C., Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Coach, right. Coach, Michigan State leads the Big Ten in stopping the run. Uh, what do you see in their scheme uh, and what do you see in their execution that makes them so good? Well, they, they believe in that. That's something that, you know, obviously knowing this defense for a long time and, and what they do, they believe in stopping the run, and they're very, very good at it. When you say that, you look at the teams we've played and how good how good they are at stopping the run. That's a huge a huge credit to them that they're leading leading our conference. So um, it's a tremendous challenge for us to try to move the football, and we're going to have to, to work very hard to do that. Back, yeah. Thank you. So in, in these unusual times, how much would it – how much are your kids? How much are your kids looking for support? You know, I mean, I, I see them in the middle of turmoil. We're all going to this press conference this afternoon in Baltimore. We don't know what's going to happen. How are your kids getting by? I mean, the players, the stadium is virtually empty. The other day. I think we're focused on. I think our players are focused on each other, and, and I really, I've said that a lot. I really mean that. I think our players, we have really closed off our room and said it's about us. And that's not being disrespectful. The fans that were there, we appreciate, right? The people who are supporting our players, we appreciate. Uh, we're not getting into that. We can't control that. We can control how we respond, how our kids respond to each other. And I think that's something they've done a great job of, from all the way back to how we've mourned, to how we've dealt with adversity, to how we've dealt with losing games. I think they've leaned on each other. So I, I don't think they're, I think they're focused on each other. They're excited they got to play well Saturday and they want to play, they want to play well again. Would it help to have a little more support out there? You know, I think that's a, that's a hard question to answer because that can come off the wrong. I mean, obviously, we, we, any, anybody that's there, we love we love them to be there. I, I would love for as many people that want to come watch these kids play, and I, I say I, we as a staff, I think we, anybody in our building, are really proud of our players. So anybody that wants to come watch our kids play, that would be awesome. But we, we appreciate the ones who've been there. Roman. Matt, do you expect DJ Durkin to be coaching the team in the coming days and on Saturday? I'm focused on, on our football team right now. Is there any concern that there could be divide among the team or any disruption to the sense of normalcy that you guys may have found in the last eight weeks? Right now we're focused on, you know, focused on practice. We had a great meeting this morning. Everybody was there, everybody was excited. We're practicing outside today. It's a nice day. It's a great day to be outside. Everybody seems pretty excited to me. Chris Marks in the back. Coach Lombardi, what jumped off the tape at him and had a nice game, 318 yards, and how are you guys going to slow him down? And I also, think, you know, Michigan sorry. State's kind of been like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. One week they look great on offense, and another week they don't look so good. Yeah, we, we're probably, you could probably label us the same way, right? So I think football's a tough game. You go out and you play, and, and I, I try to say that a lot, or we believe that. One game, one game that goes this way, one game that goes the other way. As far as their quarterbacks, I think they're playing very, very well. I think they stepped last week was a huge win, right? Purdue coming off that big, big win they had over Ohio State. Michigan State comes in and answers the challenge and played very well. So they moved the football well, uh, threw it well. It'll be, be a great challenge for our defense. I know our guys are excited to play, but it, it's, a, it's a very, very good football team. Andy? How do you plan to manage the team today? I mean, you had a meeting this morning, but what things do you tell them with all the uncertainty in Baltimore? And, and do you I mean, make a point in, in, I guess, trying to keep them focused on themselves rather than what's going on elsewhere? Yeah, that's all, that's all that we've done as a staff. So we'll have a 2.30 meeting like we always do every day. And uh, we'll be on the field at 3.45. We're going to practice. We're going to do what we do. That's all we can do.
And uh, that's not a fine question. That's what we're going to do. We're going to keep going. Adam. Matt, just similar to that, I mean, do you have to have a, some contingency plans for later in the day as far as another team meeting or just communicating with your guys depending on what happens? Not planning on it. I mean, obviously, you know, whatever whatever I need to know, whatever we need to do, I'm sure will be will be relayed to me. Uh, right now, we're, we're excited about going you know, to practice and we're excited about playing the game. Matt, back to fact that these guys have been dealing with this pretty much for three months or so um, does that make it any easier does that make it more normal that these things have come up obviously now it's coming to sort of uh, it could be coming to uh, ahead but the fact that they've had this hang over the head and, and have played well under those circumstances does that give you confidence that it's it's not a distraction yeah I have great confidence I think our guys are I think we're focused on what we can focus on. I think they're leaning, they're playing, like I said, leaning into each other. We're excited about playing, and I don't think there's anything else you know, that they're worried about right now. They went to class yesterday. They had their academic meetings. Excited to practice today. Thomas. Coach Ty Johnson uh, missed the second half of last week's game with a strained cap. How is he progressing, and how are you Turner and Jake Funk, the others, progressing? Uh, you know, Ty is, you know, kind of a, will be probably a game time decision. We'll see what he can go do today. Um, you know, I don't. I, you know, I would be. We're hopeful he can play. He's. He told me today he's going to play, um, but uh, you know, that, sometimes that doesn't always work. So works. We'll see where he goes. The other two guys, I still expect to be out uh, this weekend with, with with Funk probably being a little bit closer after after this weekend. Um, he's got an appointment here this week, and I think we'll probably be moving forward with him getting ready to play again. But you know, until they done, until they say that's right, you know, they're both out. In the back of the camps. coach, what can you say about your kids? You're one win away from bowl. And what after what's gone on here the last couple of months? I mean, how, how do you how can you uh, describe you know your kids? I think I, I've said it you know a lot of times. I think they're awesome. I think the way they've stuck together. I think the way they have played, they've played very hard. We haven't we haven't got the results we wanted on three Saturdays, and uh, that's disappointing. You know, you want to win them all, but I do think the way they've played and how hard they've played. And, they, and it's not, you know, there's not a game you say, oh, they didn't play hard or they shut it down. So I think they deserve a tremendous amount of credit for that, tremendous credit for dealing with, you know, again, this, this is really the loss of, of our teammate, their teammate, loss of Jordan. They have, you know, for a bunch of young guys, they've learned how to mourn. And some of them have just certainly done that before. I don't want to misspeak. We've all gone through different sections. But, you know, a teammate, the way this has transpired, I couldn't, we, we as a staff, as a program, I continue to say our building couldn't be more proud of our players. How do you keep them focused? What's the one thing? Just we just focus on each other. You know, we're right. we have fun. We can have fun. We work when we need to work, and that's what we've done. And I think they have they've done a very good job of that. John. Hey, coach, can you talk a little bit about Javon Leak? A perfect example of a kid who, in the beginning of the season, wasn't exactly your number one or number two running back, and all of a sudden he has just a career day on Saturday. And the Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week, Offensive Player of the Week. Yeah, he, perseverance play, pays off. Definitely. Right, he wasn't. He wasn't just a, not, not the number one or two running back. He probably yeah. wasn't the number one or two guy on my list. So, um, but he, uh, it's a great story. And then I mentioned it after the game. It's a great story about being a team guy, about understanding that sometimes, sometimes in this world, we all think we're supposed to get it right now, and that's kind of what we all sell. And that's not really how life works, or not how it's supposed to work. And he continued to work. He had three great weeks of practice. Not that the other ones weren't good, but he had up and down. And it's hard. We've got a great stable of backs. And you look at, you know, and we'll get mad at me, but, you know, I don't care about stats. But the average per carry right now is pretty salty of our running backs. And to get in, you know, to get your chance to get the ball is hard. But he got it, and he made the most of it. And then he stood in there, or sat in there Saturday after the game, and the first thing he said was the offensive line did a great job. So I'm really happy for him. And I think that's, you know, to the previous question, that's what you should say about our players. They just want to win. Take two more. Don. You already asked the question. Go ahead, Don. <laughs> in terms of Kasim's uh, pro progress uh, last week, do you see him getting back to, in terms of confidence level, where he might have started the season before he maybe had some of these rough games? And also, uh, you, you obviously weren't here last year, but when he made that little spin move, uh, that's how he got hurt last year. Um, are, are you reining him in at all at this point? 
No, I, mean, I don't think you can rein anybody in. I, mean, I think he's going to play how he plays. I think he played well Saturday. Um, again, I don't. I don't think that I have been as quite as concerned. I mean, I want to. I want to win. We want to win. I want him to play good for him. You know, obviously when we don't play well, I coach him differently. I want him to do better. Um, pig to do better. The left tackle to do better. Me to coach better. So I don't think we've had the you know the passing game. I know we all like talking about it. It was there, so we took it. And we made some plays. He made some throws. Guys made some catches. We had a great block. You know, had a great block on the long run there, or the long, you know, short completion. So I think it seemed, you know, obviously for him to have a good day, I'm happy for him if I make him feel good. But Saturday will be a different day. Really, really good challenge. Emily in the back. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thanks for taking my questions. And I'll take them all. Let's okay. Go. <laughs> I got nothing to do. Um, so we, we are going to be covering this press conference in Baltimore, and obviously we don't know uh, what's going to happen. It's it's possible, you know, you're interim coach. If you could just talk, I'd like to hear a little bit about your personal style and how you may be different and why you're the right person for this time, you know, that the team is um, dealing with uh, such a tragic thing. They're having a really good season right now, but I'm just wondering, you as a person, um, what special things you're bringing to the table here that helps this team move forward and do as well as they're doing? Yeah, I, I mean, I appreciate the question. I don't think there's anything special I'm doing. I think our, our entire building has done a great job of sticking together, and everybody's got a job, and we've made a big deal about everybody not only doing their job but appreciating the job everybody else does because our players are the focus, and they've been the focus, and that's how it always has to be and always has been. It's about the players. but. You know, our managers and Drew downstairs do a great job getting their stuff all the time. Um, guys in the Mason in the weight room, guys are doing a great job in there. Scott in the training room is doing a great job in there. We go upstairs, the food's ready. Everybody is, is doing their job. So I'm, there's nothing special about me, but uh, I think our entire building has done a heck of a job. Dave. Coach, back to uh, the backs. Uh, you know, the, the, just the way that you guys have been able to run the football this fall, the success that you guys have had, and just the what becomes more of a priority when facing a team like Michigan State with what they do up front? Well, we got to obviously you always start, well, it starts up front, right? They're really, really good. Um, again, a tremendous respect for for this scheme, for this defense. Our guys are going to have to play well up front to run the ball at all. I mean, you mentioned they're leading the Big Ten in rush defense. Our guys are going to have to block well up front. Um, our backs are going to have to hit the hole at the right time. We're going to have to, you know, to make some plays in the passing game to give us so they all can't be sitting there, uh, you know, two yards off the line of scrimmage. So. It's going to be a team effort to do. We're going to have to find a way to move the ball, and they're not giving up very many points. I mean, the, the games are you know they're 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 really really good defense, which is another another challenge for us. All right, thanks, coach. Appreciate all right, it. thank y'all.